This is um, skinning a Dover sole, probably my favourite fish. Um, the first thing you have to do with a Dover sole, um, well the very first thing is to remove the scales, but quite often they come descaled. Uh, they do have quite tough scales. And you use a scaler or a knife like this and work from the t tail up to the head, working against the lie of the scales to lift them up easily. The other thing you have to do, which I've already done, is to cut off the lateral fins just close to the body like that and the same on the other side. Again, it's easier if you work from the tail up to the head because that's all the way the little fins run. So having done that, we're ready to remove the skin. The first thing I do is just take a knife right near the tail like that and just make a little cut through the, the skin. It's a bit like sort of seal skin. It's very, very thin thick and sort of rubbery. Then I just run my knife under the skin just to lift a bit to give me some purchase. And then I'll take a bit of salt and I'll just put some on the tail to help me hold the tail. And then I just pull the skin away from the flesh right up and over the head like that. Now I'll turn it over and I'll do exactly the same on the other side. Just make a little cut down to the flesh, not too hard with the knife, very gently. Then slide my knife under the skin to give myself a little bit of purchase like that. And then just take a bit of salt, put some on the tail and some on the skin, just to help me to grip. And then I hold the skin and pull it away from the flesh in one smooth, easy motion like that. And there we have the Dover sole ready for frying. The, my favoured way of cooking it and eating it myself is pan fried. And I always give it a dusting of flour. But before that, I'm just going to season the sole. I find it easier to season fish, more exact to season fish rather than season the flour. So a little dusting of salt, just salt, and now into the flour. Just cover the fish in flour like that and then give it a jolly good shake because you only want the very lightest dusting of flour and maybe a little bit of a slap too and we're ready to fry. So now to fry my fish, first of all not a lot of oil, this is ordinary vegetable oil, nothing special about it, a couple or three tablespoons of that uh, and then just a, a few grams of butter just to improve the flavour. And the reason for using oil and butter is that the butter doesn't really then burn. When that's nicely heated, I add my salt. And now I just simply fry it for about four or five minutes aside on a moderate heat. Don't get it too hot, otherwise you'll burn the flour. So that's been cooking for about four minutes. Just going to turn it over now. That looks rather nice and cook that for about the same time on the other side. So that's now been cooking for about four minutes on either side, but the last thing I do is just put a temperature probe right into the centre of the fish, because I'm going to take this fish off the bone and it has to be cooked in the centre, otherwise the fillets will stick to the bone. And I'm looking for a temperature of about 60 degrees centigrade, then I know the bones will come away from the flesh. So that's now ready, so take it across to my worktop, lift the fish out and onto a chopping board. And now to fillet it, just first of all pull away the lateral bones from the fish like that, all the way round. Now then, to take the fillet away from the bone, first of all just ease the knife through like that on either side. And the great thing about a Dover sole, it's very firm textured, therefore the fillets hold together very well, making it very easy to take the main bone out. So I just push the fillets to one side like that, as you can see, and then <coughs> As I put in the book, I unzip the backbone. The 
which is, I think, quite a good expression because it looks a bit like a zip. And you just pull the backbone out like that and just get the, the fillet back. That's ready to serve. Just get my fish slice. There's a little bit of bone there. There we go. And transfer that to a plate like that. And there it is. Now I would serve that just with some brown butter bernoisette, which is made with a little lemon juice and some very finely chopped parsley just poured over the top. Oh, lovely.